Okay guys, and welcome back. So, I wasn't gonna do a video on this one um, because this generator works. Um, you know, it, there's no surge, uh, starts right up, and uh, there's not much of a story here. So I already changed the oil, um, and uh, I should probably tell you what it is first. It's a, um, a 15 year old Briggs & Stratton. Um, it's the Elite Series G1000M. Uh, it is not an inverter generator, it's just a generator kind of with a shell over it. No AVR, and the actual model number on this is uh, 01532. Anyway, um, so I was cleaning it up and I did notice a few things that might be worth a short video. Um, so first off, uh, the fuel line running from the fuel shutoff to the carburetor is uh, badly dry rot and cracked. So I will put a new fuel line on that. Um, also, I'm just going to turn this around. You know, I puffed the air box off. That's really just wanted to drain the carburetor and see what was going on in there. And it's perfectly clean. There's nothing, no water, no debris, um, which is what I kind of suspected since it does run well um, but this fuel line I don't know how well that shows up but there's cracks all over it so that's got to be replaced uh, unfortunately I don't have this size it's uh, 3 sixteenths I uh, usually you know I use quarter inch on almost everything um, you know some of the smaller inverter generators use kind of that um, smaller diameter hose which I do have um, but this is kind of in between. So anyway, I'm just going to drain the gas in preparation for that fuel line arriving. You know, pop this off. I might have to take the plastic off. Um, you know, it's connected in right here to this fuel shutoff. And this is, this is the other problem on this machine. Um, this does work, but you have to be a really strong person to turn this off. I cannot do it. Um, with a pair of pliers, I can. Um, so I thought, fine, I'll just go online, order a new one. It's probably like five bucks. It's not five bucks. It's $55, um, which is obscene. So, you know, I'll take, I'm probably going to take this off and maybe put some oil in it, see if it can free it up. I'm not expecting much, but you know, on a generator like this, I mean, I bought the whole generator for a hundred bucks and honestly, I probably won't get more than 150 for it. So, um, it's absolutely, I'm not going to spend $50 on a fuel shutoff. The other thing I noticed too, is that this is generating, you know, it, a little bit too much power. It's at about 130 volts. I think it was around 63 Hertz, even with a load on it, it doesn't really settle down too much. Um, so I was able to locate the adjustment screw, which you probably can't see, but it's way in there to the right of the fuel shutoff. So I should really get a screwdriver in there and, uh, adjust that a bit. Um, so, you know, I probably am going to have to take this shell off to get easy access to the fuel line. Uh, so I'll show you that and uh, it'll give me a chance to just clean things up a bit and, um, and then just wait for the parts to come. Look what showed up in the mail today. 3 16 
fuel line. So I should have everything I need now to put this mess back together. Uh, but before I do, uh, there's a couple of things I just wanted to uh, cover, which I don't think I really explained very well. So when I took apart this case, I had a lot of trouble getting the, the bolts out of the handle. And I probably edited 80% of that video out and I finally resorted to just putting a drill on it and spinning it so fast that the plastic and the bolt, the nut, heated up and just pulled out of the plastic case, which is fine. There's no exterior damage, but it does mean that I'm going to have one less bolt on the handle, which I think will be okay. If not, then we'll deal with it then. But just to show you what happened here, you can kind of see... The nuts were kind of included in the casting here and became one with the unit. Unfortunately, the bolt that was on this side was kind of seized on the threads. And when I turned the bolt out, it was just turning the nut and not releasing. Um, anyway, it's out now. Should be, should not have been this difficult, but things never go the way you think they're going to go. So that's that. I guess the other thing worth noting is I did try different penetrating fluids on the fuel petcock or fuel valve, and nothing freed it up. Um, it still turns with pliers okay, but um, you know I don't want to sell it this way. Um, and I realized too that this is the fuel inlet. It's actually a quarter inch. And on the outlet, it's a 316. So it's kind of a unique piece. Um, they're, like I said, they are available, but at a cost of $55, which is not, not going to happen. So instead, I'm going to use one of these more traditional ones. It already has, you know, quarter inch coming out of, quarter inch inner diameter coming out of the fuel tank, so that goes on no problem. This is the old 3 16th line, and I didn't try very hard, but you could see I could push it on to the quarter inch um, with a little bit of effort. So um, I think, you know, I can probably put a little oil on to help it, or even take a heat gun to soften up that a little bit and get it on. And then we'll just use this um, to shut off the fuel. So with that said, I'm gonna set you guys on a stand somewhere and put this thing back together. Okay, so this piece here is gonna help hold the fuel shut off. I will zip tie it in so it doesn't kind of fall in. Also, this, I don't know if you can see it too well, but it serves as a platform for the fuel tank. The fuel tank actually doesn't have any fasteners on it. It just kind of slides in and sits on a couple of mounts and is kind of suspended here above the engine. Uh, one thing worth noting too, the bottom of the fuel tank, because it's in close proximity, um, it has this like foil insulation. And it was all, it was, for whatever reason, there's a seam 
running down here and it was starting to all peel off the material here. So I got some, um, I had some tape that's used for like HVAC. Um, and it's like a foil tape, just ran it along here to keep everything down and in place. You can kind of see this is kind of what it was doing all along here. So anyway, let me um, probably put the bracket in on the other side and then I'll set the tank down in and wire it up, plumb it up, whatever you want to call it, to the carburetor. All right, slight change of plan. This originally had two kind of prongs sticking down, but this fuel valve cannot fit in between the two. So I did knock one off and filed it smooth. So what I'm gonna do is just use it to rest the hose against, and that'll kind of wrap a zip tie around this to help it stay in place. Okay, so it's all put back together. I'm gonna to turn that throttle screw down probably at least half a turn. And that should do it. So uh, in the morning, I'll bring this outside, fire it up and test the power output and make the final adjustments.
All right, thanks for watching.